the first tooth we're going to wax is tooth number eight. So if we look at it from the occlusal surface, tooth number eight is the maxillary right central incisor. So if we look at it from the facial view, then we're going to see that number eight is on our left side. So the first thing we need to understand are the concept of line angles and point angles. So if we take this out, of the model, then we're going to have the line angle running in the front of the tooth on both sides. A line angle is the mating of two surfaces. We have the facial surface, and then we have the distal and the mesial surface. So if we look at the line angle, it mates with two surfaces, the front or the facial side also called the labial, the mesial portion of the tooth, and the junction of this is the mesial-labial line angle. On the distal surface, we have the distal-labial line angle. On the incisal portion, we have the incisal labial line angle, which is this is the incisal surface, the labial surface. So this line here is the line angle that meets between the incisal surface and the labial surface. Now the point angles are in the mating of three surfaces. This is the mesial incisal labial line point angle. This is the distal labial incisal point angle, which is also a corner. If we take a look at this a cube, you will understand a little more how these work. Now, for instance, not quite a cube, it's a little box, but nevertheless, we can imagine the line angles and the point angles. So, on this box, the line angles would be right here. These lines on the edges, these would be called line angles. And that's because it's, it mates two surfaces. One surface here, and one surface here. And the line angle is the meeting of these two surfaces. Now the point angle would be a corner right here, which would meet this surface here, this surface here, and the top surface. So this will be a point angle. Now each tooth has line angles and point angles, which allows us to identify by naming these areas of the doctor about the shaping of the teeth. Many times we have to talk over the phone and we don't have video access, so 
we will have to be able to describe to the doctor what areas we're talking about. So after the removal of this tooth, we're going to go ahead and take the tooth, which is called a die, and we will place it inside the model and replace this tooth. This preparation would be what we would get after the dentist cuts down the tooth such as this and the first step we will take is we're going to take some lubricating material and we'll take a very lit and apply it to the dye. We will further remove some more from the dye with our fingers because if we leave too much loop on the die, uh, we will have a problem of um, our falling off the die too easily. So, when we put it back here, we have to make sure that the margins, these are the margins right here, are below the margins of the model. You see how our margins are on the bottom. So if we look at it straight from the top, we can't see them. And that is so when we make the crown, we do not see the margins when we look at the patient. The crown will look like it's coming out of the gum. And this is the representation of the gum. So, the first step we will take is we will apply a coating of wax on the preparation area. Wax, waxing spatula and we're going to place an even layer of wax over the surface of the die, making sure that we do not go over the margins. If we go over the margins, that will create an, an undercut. If we would try to take the wax up off, it would break. Although in this case, we're not going to try to take these wax ups off since our main goal is to learn the anatomy of the teeth. don't want to put too thin of a coat on it because then we'll just have to add more later. So we just kind of fill this up with wax. In areas where it's very thin, we can add a little bit more. Make sure that you don't heat up the wax too much because if you do, it's just going to flow off those angles and uh, it will become thin again. So we want to control the heat. So now once we see the wax turn matte or not shiny, then we know it's starting to cool. So once it's cooled a little bit, we put it back in the model. Make sure that you don't press it from the incisor portion, because then you may crack the wax up off the die and you'll have to start over. 
So what we do is we hold the dye from the lingual or from the tongue side and the labial and then we will push it all the way down until the margins are below the gingival replication. And then we can further add some wax here where it's thin and complete our coping. Okay everyone, let's give it a try. Now the next step is to try to replicate the areas of the point angles. So if we look at it, the uh, central incisors are slightly longer than the lateral incisors. Although not for everyone in this model, it's true. But on an ideal case, centrals are a little bit longer than the laterals. So the point angles should match up to this central incisor. So we will put a tiny bit of wax at a time until we reach that portion. You can blow on it to expedite the cooling of the wax if you like. Then we go to the distal point angle, so we're going to start at the distal point angle of the die. And we're going to build up the wax until we reach the point angle level that we want on our central incisor. Remember to control the heat. So if we see point angle trying to get a little bit higher than the lateral point angle right here. So it kind of looks like a little snail there. So once we reach the point angles, this is what we're going to end up. So the next portion we wax up is the labial incisal. line angle, which is in essence the incisal edge of the two. And to wax that up, all we do is simply fill in the gap between the little horns. It's more or less about the same size. 
if you make it a little bit longer, you can always carve it back. A little bit. The next portion we wax is the mesial line angle. So we're going to try to, to the adjacent tooth. So what we're trying to accomplish here is try to mimic or wax the tooth right now. So as we're waxing up the mesial line angle, You have to kind of look at the shape of this tooth. On the distal, we notice that it has like a bulbous shape. And it comes down to a narrower neck. On the mesial, it has more of a slight curvature right on the mesial. So on the mesial of number 8, we're going to have to try to mimic that, make it a little wider up here, and as we come down, make it a little narrower. And we can look at it from the top, like so, and make sure we don't build it out too far on the facial or labial surface right here. So after we did <coughs> most of the uh, mesial line angle, we go up to the distal. So we start closer to the neck, make it a little bit narrower. And as we go up here, we kind of make like a little S shaped curve. Come up, make sure you control that heat, and kind of build it out slowly. Go a little bit wider as you're get, getting closer and closer to the inside edge. When we go step by step like this, it kind of creates for us a framework to build the tooth on. Instead of just building up a big glob of wax and uh, try to carve it back down to, to uh, mimic the shape of the adjacent tooth. So as you see, here it's a little bit narrower and as we go up to the incised ledge it becomes wider. And we look at it from the top of view. We can take a look and make sure we don't build it too far out because carving back will destroy our shape that we create. The next portion is the gingival aspect or the aspect closer to the gum. This is the area where the height of contour is. The contour is the shape of the tooth. Height of contour means it's the highest part of the tooth, or the highest part of the tooth shape. So we kind of 
build it out a little bit. Now this tooth here is a tiny bit too flat to my taste, so we're going to do a slight contour here that's less flat than number nine. So if we look at it, it's going to come out slightly more. Now, the general rule of thumb is that the height of contour here should be about the same height as the gingival aspect here. So if we take a careful look and take an instrument and kind of lay it down on the tooth this bulky aspect of the gingiva should be about the same as our height of contour and that is because <coughs> when we chew our food we want the food to stimulate the gums so that the gums don't become soft. The gums are like a muscle. If you stimulate it, they'll become strong and healthy. So now, we have the mesial aspect of the tooth. We have the distal aspect of the tooth. We have the gingival aspect, which contains the height of contour. And now it's time to fill in the labial aspect. Now the tooth is made up of parts called lobes. So when our teeth are developing, before even we are born, they are formed from lobes which are distinct separate aspects of the tooth. The uh, central incisor is made up of four lobes. Three lobes in the front, the distal, the central, and the mesial. And the fourth lobe is in the back here. It's the singular. So from the top we have one, two, three and four and they all join together as we'll see later so now this middle aspect that we're filling in is the central wall so we're kind of building the tooth as nature would have built it out of the separate lobes so the way we fill them in is we build the mesial, the distal, and the central lobes together. And as we build them together, we are going to almost automatically build the developmental grooves. Now, what are the developmental grooves? are the grooves formed by the lobes coming together and fusing. So, as we're building the different lobes of the tooth, build them together, we also build the developmental grooves into the tooth. Now, for anterior teeth, the developmental grooves are not very line-like, like what we have. we have to do is we have to blend them so they are less obvious. As we see on the adjacent teeth, the developmental grooves are like little depressions that run vertically on the tooth. Some of them are developmental grooves which divide the lobes and some are secondary grooves like this one that just kind of form out of irregularities in the enamel. 
So as you can see, we have these grooves that now we have to kind of blend a little bit so that they are not so readily visible. They are basically depressions that create visual irregularities on the teeth. So if you see, I kind of blended them together now and you can't really see it unless you look at it from the side. We have little shadows that get created as we look at it. So now we have a general shape of the tooth. And now we have to double check to see that the incisal edge is similar to the incisal edge on the adjacent tooth, which is tooth number nine, or left central incisor. So if we move the model in different angles, we can see the little differences that we need to correct. Like for instance here, we see that the incisal edge of number 8, which we're relaxing, is a little bit further in than number 9. So we have to bring that out a little bit. So we will add a little bit to the facial corner of the incisal edge to slightly bring it out and make it even with the other two. Now we can only see this from this angle. If we look at it from here, we probably would not be able to see the difference. We could see it from this angle. And we look at it from here, it still looks about the same, but once we turn it, we still see a little difference which means that we have to move up a little bit on the incisal edge and add a little bit more. And this is only on the corner of the incisal edge, the facial corner, I should say. So now we turn it a little bit more. And you see that it's starting to look more or less the same. So now if we look at it from the side, you can see it's starting to look just about even. Now we look at it from the lingual portion. Let's see where we are here. Now here we can see that the distal corner is a little bit further in than the distal corner number nine. So we're going to have to add a little bit right here to bring it out so that it looks more even to this tube. Then we can add a little bit other places where we think might need a little bit more to make it look more similar to number nine. Now right now we're only working on the facial surface. The lingual surface we haven't gotten to yet. But we have to look at it this way. Both ways. Here we see that it looks a little bit like my this. So we're going to correct that eventually. So if we look at it, obviously this tip is going this way. So we're going to have to take away from here a little bit. 
to make it look like it's angled towards the medium. The central lobe is also angled a little bit off, so we're gonna have to change the direction of that. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to the lingual surface. On the lingual surface, we also have a line angle on the distal and on the mesial. And on the very lingual, we have a cingulum. This is the cingulum right here. The cingulum also can have some ridges on it, some grooves in it, but every tooth is different. So as you can see, laterals these laterals don't have it sometimes even centrals don't have it so we're going to move on and uh, we're going to create the distal line angle the distal marginal ridge it's called the distal marginal ridge it's the distal margin of the tooth or the distal end of the tooth it's right here right at the end here this is the mesial marginal ridge distal marginal ridge this is also the mesial line angle and the distal line angle mesial lingual line angle right here an angle here a marginal ridge distal marginal ridge so as you can see the mesial marginal ridge or the mesial line angle is a slight curve this way on the distal however it's a much more extreme curve and it comes down to the neck of the tooth again in a slight S shape so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to build the distal marginal ridge or the distal line angle. And then come in and narrow as we get down to the bottom. wider area here's the narrower area so if we made it a little bit too much like I did here we can always take an instrument and kind of narrow it a little bit to make it look similar to this now ideally all teeth have contact areas. The contact areas are a little different on each tooth. On the central incisors, they are located on the junction between the, mes the incisal and the middle third. So each tooth is divided into the incisal third, the middle third here, and the gingival third, which is right here. On the labial surface, this would be the incisal third, this would be the middle third, and this would be the gingival third. So if we divided this way in three equal parts, those lines are the junctions between the thirds. So next, we're going to move on to the mesial 
line angle or is your marginal range. If we are conversing with the doctor or any other dental professional, if we mention either of those names for this part of the tooth, they will recognize it and they will know what you're talking about. It is very important that when you are the marginal ridges that they be on the same exact level with the adjacent teeth. If they are not, the patient will feel with their tongue some unevenness and as a reflex their tongue will go there and it will be uncomfortable for the patient and they will come back complaining of discomfort. Sometimes they won't even know what the discomfort is, but they just know that something is not comfortable for them. And when we're waxing the marginal ridges, we can make the gingival part of them a slight bit thicker and rounder and we can make a slight little groove right on the gingival part of the cingulum and from that little groove we can maybe form some these ridges so that they look to the tooth adjacent. So here's our cingulum. Now if you notice this marginal ridge is on the same plane as this and this marginal ridge here is on a similar plane to this here is a little bit higher so I will take the tool and maybe carve this down a little bit so that we don't have such a difference in height once we carve it down we can round it out a bit. Here we can add a couple of little ridges and this is completely optional. I like to add them because the other tooth has them also. Some dentists don't like to add any of that and they just like to have a very smooth lingual plane to the uh, incisors just because some patients prefer that but you don't want to put a smooth surface next to a surface that is not smooth because the patient will pick up on the difference and thus they will feel some discomfort. They can get used to it but and request some kind of adjustment. Now most of the time the anterior teeth have a concave surface. Sometimes they can have more of a straight surface and sometimes depending on the occlusion the dentist may request a convex surface.
So now we look at the tooth in all angles. And again, we have to correct this angle. And this makes it look like we don't have a perfectly straight long axis. Now the long axis of the tooth is a line that goes right through the center of the tooth. We get right on the center and it also goes through the center right here. So generally you want the long axis of the teeth parallel to each other. Sometimes the long axis of the teeth are converging, which means this way, angled in. Sometimes they are diverging, which is they are angled outwards. Now we have to consider the anterior teeth as a whole to make sure that if all the teeth are diverging, we have to make a tooth that we're replacing also diverging. Because the eye will pick up the fact that this tooth is pointing in a different direction than all the other teeth. So the next step we're going to do is I'm going to try to see if we could correct the long axis of this tooth. First, as we can see, this tooth looks longer now. And the reason it looks longer is because the lingual aspect of this tooth needs to be adjusted. Because when we added the wax, we made it appear longer when we look at it this way. Because we added to the lingual also. So now, we're going to take away a little bit. From the lingual aspect. And try to see if we can make it appear the same length. You see? I um, took away a little just from the lingual. I made sure that the labial aspect of this tooth here on this edge right here, which is the labial incisal part of the incisal edge. If we look at this, the incisal edge is made up also of point angles and line angles. Here's a point angle, here's a point angle, there's a point angle and there's a point angle. So this would be the mesial incisal labial point angle above the incisal edge. This would be the distal incisal labial point angle of the incisal edge. So they're all made up of the same words. Labial, ball, incisal. We just have to understand that point angles are three surfaces and line angles are two surfaces. So this would be the labial incisal line angle and it is also incisal edge. This would be the mesial labial incisal point angle. Mesial incisal labial point angle of the incisal edge. So this is like a little rectangle. And that has corners and it has sides. So now, 
almost down to the right size. So since we have this tooth running in a divergent direction from this tooth, what we're going to have to do is take away from the mesial portion of the tooth to try to tilt it back towards the mesial. So the long axis here will need to straight up which means we have to take away from here and add to here and that will twist this line a little bit more towards the knees So use your nails to shape the wax. And it's not completely. Uh, you just have to deal with the central lobe, and we're going to move that by adding a little more to the central lobe on the distal, on the gingival, and a little bit to the central lobe on the mesial at the incisal edge. So now, the tooth looks more straight up and down. Once we're done with that, then we're going to add to the distal labial line angle. Or, you could also call it the distal lobe. Then we're going to blend the developmental groove, which joins them. And there's most of your shaping right there. Now what we need to do is just take the tooth out and really clean it up. Make it nice and smooth like the adjacent tooth and make sure that we have contact points in the proper place. This one will have to have a contact area right here. I shouldn't have said contact points because contact points are on the occlusion. Contact areas are between the adjacent teeth. So here we go, we're going to take it out and as we can see we have little irregularities right around there. Now what we need to do here is very important because if we add too much here and we bulk it out then when we try to put it back in this model it's going to keep popping up because the gums here are made out of rubber and they will squeeze this right out so we must make the gingival areas in the correct shape if they're not in the correct shape then you're going to see the uh, teeth pop out of the model. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carve down the height of this wax so that it blends with the tooth itself. The dentist here prepared the tooth with a margin this is the margin of the preparation and this here the second line that you see in white enamel junction 
of the tooth itself. So that's part of the crown of the tooth. So when we wax the tooth, we must wax it so that this area flows with the wax 100%. So when we run an instrument across here into the wax, we should not feel this line. It has to be completely smooth. So now we're going to carve this down to the same level as the die. And that is the level we have to s stick to when we add to these defects in the wax. If we look at it from the side, we can see the curvature run into the two at the same level. Now we very, very carefully heat up the instruments and try to flow just enough wax into this is the distal portion. We have to do just enough wax right here. Once we've done that, then we can go back to our instrument. And very gently, once the wax cooled, take away any excess wax we might have put on. And the wax should be 100% lined up with the dye and its margin. If we look at it from here, you can see that the distal portion, the mesial, and we have to make sure that the distal of the central is a little bit rounder than the mesial portion. So little in irregularities, we can add a little bit of wax here. We don't really need too many concavities. The only concavities you should see on here are developmental uh, depressions. When you blend, you can heat the instrument a little more. When you add, you have to be careful so you don't overheat the instrument and destroy the shapes that you are trying to create. You can also think about what types of instruments you can use to create the different shapes. Convex instruments you can use to create concave instruments. You can use to create 
convex shapes. So if we have a convex instrument or an instrument that curves, we can use the convex side to create a concave shape right here. So if we carve here as a convex part of the instrument, we can carve here to create our little S shape. You see right? We'll create a slight S shape. And then here I can use my other instrument to create a convex shape right here. Concave here, convex there which creates an S. Now what it looks like. So that's our tooth right there. You see how it's wide at the crown portion or the incisor portion and then it comes down and there. Now we can further improve this shape by really observing these curves. Here we can bring this down slightly, make it a little bit rounder here. And we can bring this round shape a little bit further down towards the gums. You see how this curve here kind of ends at the junction of the middle third and the gingival third. So we can do the same thing here. So we just take the tooth out and we can add a little bit right here. And give it little bit of a concavity a little bit lower and here we can do the same thing we can add a little bit there we have a little deficiency at the contact area so we're going to add a little more wax at the contact area so before it cools down we can push it in and we have our contact area right there at the junction in the middle third and incisal third and we have a contact area right here and as we can see now we have more of a convex area here so if you notice that Sizal edge here is a tiny bit long, so we're going to shorten it a slight bit. As we notice, this tooth might look a little bit wider, but most of these teeth have no contact area through all these teeth. We're going to actually make them a tiny bit wider so that they do have contact area since that is one of the uh, parameters of the scores to have contact areas on all the teeth which most um, people do. There are some people without contact areas, but for us, and that is part of our requirements. So and we're going to have to make contact areas with mesial and this of whatever. So this is our lingual. As you can see, we have a little bit of a lingual groove right here, and then a lingual pit, 
And as I said, not everybody has it, so... Sometimes you will not see it on anterior curves. When you see these incisal edges, which seem to be worn, generally you will want to mimic that on the adjacent teeth so that we can make it look the same. So this is our central incisor. 